Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very special episode of CSK News. And why I say that is because today we have so many stories in today's episode of CSK News. I want to make sure you all know that every time, every episode I have here in the description, there will always be time markers for every story. So if I share a lot of stories with all of you guys, you may like some, you may not. You can always bounce around by looking in the description. And also you'll find there today's sponsor, TradeSkinsFast.com. Huge thanks to them. As of right now, they have one of the lowest trading fees of any trading website out there. And they also are offering a short time bonus. If you put their name in your, in your actual Steam name, you get a 3.5% discount if you use their website and huge thanks to them for sponsoring today's video because it's a great video and I have a lot of stories for all of you the first of which does involve Zeus now I'm going to talk about Gambit in a later half of today's episode I'll talk about the PGL major if you guys don't know what happened it was pretty darn epic but I do want to talk about Zeus's tweet on screen right now where he did reference two words it was called death book and if you guys do not understand that tweet it's actually a reference to an anime series on Netflix as well for all of you guys to check out it's actually called death book it's a 37 part series where the main character in that actual uh, in that storyline finds a book you know called the death book and each name in that book actually ends up being a person who dies now kind of ironic here as well many of you probably saw throughout the major itself Zeus was taking pictures with several pro players out there some pro players he played against some he didn't some teams he beat some he didn't but it was kind of funny because he referenced them all being on his death book because in the end Gamut did of course win the major sorry for the spoiler there everyone who did not actually watch the major finals and in the end I guess in, in some kind of sense Zeus did kill all the people he took pictures with so kind of a funny story there also mentioned as well with Olaf Meister tweeting out this people thinking what does what does Zeus have to give Olaf Meister and many of you found out it was actually Zeus saying I love Olaf during his post game interview and this is where it actually came from when they actually arrived at the major Zeus is interviewing Olaf Meister and here's what they had to say about if Gambit won the major what would Zeus have to do what, what will you do if you win the major if you Zeus you, you take it's like a uh, trophy and say Zeus I love you <laughs> <laughs> if we win the major, okay, I will do it. Really? Yeah, I will do it. Yeah, yeah, will do it. Oh, but if you win, you will scream, Olaf, I love you. Of course. Okay. Easy, my friend. And also in bigger CSK news, kind of ironic actually on community questions. Thank you to all of you guys who submit questions in the comment section down below. You guys asked me a couple days ago, where is Hiko? What's happening with Hiko? I told you all he was working on a North American roster, and that roster has now officially been announced. Actually, a part of Team Rogue. So kind of a wild card there. And please follow me, guys. Uh, this actually confirmed a lot of information out there. First of which, if you all remember the rumors about a couple months ago, we thought North Academy will be joining Team Rogue because they joined their ESCA roster. That has now been declined and, and denied. That rumor is now false as Hiko and the rest of former North American squad Enigma 6 has joined together and they currently have four members and a coach going forward. We don't know exactly who their fifth member will be but as of right now will be Hiko the legend himself alongside Vice, Wrath, and Shinobi and it, it's not really clear who their fifth member will be but a short story about Enigma 6 is they actually have qualified for a spot in the relegation matches for the sixth season of ESL Pro League so they have a great spot locked in there and a great spot to actually show what they can do. Kind of an underwhelming roster here that I think going forward but they could surprise us and hopefully will. Now also, who's going to be their fifth member? I think it actually might be A2Z, although kind of weird why they didn't announce him right away because A2Z was also on Enigma 6. It will not be Whitmer though as well. You guys know a very well-known North American former pro player there, Whitmer, a very well-known name. I'll link his Twitter on screen for all of you. He is actually going to be pursuing full-time streaming and he was never even offered a spot on this team. For all of you Whitmer fans out there, he was never offered the spot. He was never considered. He was a part of Enigma 6 though when they qualified for Season 6 of ESL Pro League and he left kind of just out of nowhere to pursue full-time live streaming and had some other issues going on as well. So Hiko's team going forward will be a part of Team Rogue. We don't know who their fit member is going to be going forward as well, but I can guarantee you guys their fit member will not be Freakazoid, but Freakazoid will be coming back to competitive CSGO. Many of you guys know the longtime member of Echo Fox. After Echo Fox kind of disbanded, he was left live streaming and not really unannounced. He kind of took a break from CSGO, but Freakazoid is also now coming back officially to CSGO. Leave a comment down below if you guys are hyped up about that. Bullyzoid is back. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding guys. I, I have no hard feelings toward him, but I can guarantee you guys Freakazoid will not be joining Hiko's team. Just so you guys know, he will have his own team and it will not be a part of Team Rogue. Going to be excited to see who he does join and who Hiko's new fifth member will be. And that was an exciting North American news. Now bouncing off that, actually going to your Portuguese side of things guys, we had RMN. You guys heard about this or probably heard the headlines. We had RMN. He's actually a pretty well known Portuguese player, currently playing for Kick Esports, a Portuguese club. If you guys don't notice that name, it's actually former Phase Fox, now currently on Dignitas Fox. He used to play for Kick Esports 
Sports back in the day as well. So pretty well-known Portuguese club out there. Our man, the guy who was actually vac banned, has had a crazy week so far because all in this week, actually a couple days ago, he was vac banned. Luckily for him, though, being a pro player, having some notoriety and people knowing him in the scene, within 48 hours, his vac ban was lifted. People wanted to know why. Our man himself took a Twitter and said it was actually deemed as an Overwatch ban. Kind of curious, though, because it's actually a second Overwatch ban. Kind of a rarity out there. We've had several pro players who have been Overwatch banned falsely and actually, you know, have been, have deserved that Overwatch ban. But a second time around is kind of curious, but I do believe the Vacman was probably a false, falsely triggered by either a bot out there or someone who just hates this guy and knows what his gameplay looks like. But RMN has officially been un banned and he'll be back to competitive play for Kick Esports. Now, bouncing off that as well, thank you to all of you guys who've been submitting community questions down below. The, today's community question is brought to you by this guy who has commented this not once, but actually twice on two separate videos. And he asked me to where is Counter-Strike Classic Offensive? I have a contact over there who's actually an admin and a moderator for that game, a direct line to all of you guys. And I can tell you, he said nothing big will be released for Counter-Strike Classic Offensive until mid-September, until the operation that currently is, Operation Hydra, is done. Now, you guys remember Operation Hydra dropped back on May 23rd. It's going to last until mid-September, and we're not going to expect anything with Counter-Strike Classic Offensive release-wise or any big updates until mid-September, if not later. So kind of a, I know it's really kind of an anticlimactic thing because a couple months ago, or actually several months ago, we had several thousand people very interested. We had pro players all making YouTube videos about it. We had 50,000 people in their Steam group. I'll link that down below for all of you guys. And the hype has kind of died down, but they want it to die down. They don't want to build your expectations up, guys. So trust me, Counter-Strike Classic Offensive is still a thing. It should still be a thing in a couple months, but it's going to take some time to actually develop a right mod for that and actually have the game released and not have any bugs in it. So that was an update for all of you guys on that. And this may or may not be the last segment in today's video. If it is, I am so sorry, guys. I'm going to ramble on for a couple minutes here about the major and the actual finals itself. I usually do a full tournament breakdown from the group stages, the quarterfinals, the semis, and the finals. I'm going to keep it right to the finals, guys. Keep it short and sweet here and how it went full circle between Immortals and Gambit Gaming here in the finals and why I thought it was one of the best major matchups I have ever seen. Now, there were a lot of complaints out there about people saying, oh, no, it was SK and Strauss in the quarterfinals, man. That was a final matchup. Stop. Seriously, think about it, guys. That was a terrible series. Of all the series we saw in the playoffs, there were quite a few 2-0s there, a lot of sweeps. A mortal sweep of Virtus Pro is very impressive itself. But that SK Astralis matchup was not even fun to watch. The final matchup, though, when it came down to a best of three in Gambit versus Immortals going to map three, now that was CSGO at its finest. I'm going to share with you guys, of course, I already showed Zeus's tweet. Uh, Dren t did take the MVP of the series there and of the tournament itself. A well-earned spot there because throughout group stages, he was dropping 30 bombs and 25 bombs, doing a great job there. But it was an amazing series to see for several reasons, of course. Now, I'll do a little breakdown for all of you guys. Of course, we have the first map on Cobblestone going to Immortals in a dominating fashion. Watching that being played, I thought I'd even have a chance to go 2-0 there, but Gamut took their map back. That was going to be Train, a much closer series there, 6-2-11. It went to map three on Inferno, and a map that many teams did play very well, particularly it was Big who played it well, but Immortals played several strong maps there. They actually beat Big on Inferno, so it was going to be a strong matchup for them, and going into it, I actually gave I gave Immortals the, the benefit of the doubt because they beat a team like Big earlier in the tournament on that map itself, but Gambit took a risk, and Gambit went up big in the first half, and why I loved it so much, though, is because going into the second half, we actually had Gambit up 11-4, to four, but it was two teams who were great at doing one thing, and that was playing one side of CSGO. We had Gambit Gambit Gaming, an amazing T-sided team, if you guys did not know about that, throughout the entire major, they average around seven to eight rounds every single T side. Now we go to we go to Immortals, they were ending the game on their CT side. So we had butting heads in the major finals, guys, in a best of three series, map three. We had two teams on their best side to end the game, and of course it did end in pretty close fashion. That scoreline lies to us. That was such a close game. A battle of ecos and, and four spies by, I, I thought, to start the second half, of course, Gambit, you know, they lost the first four rounds of the second half. It went from 11-4 to 11-8, and it was crazy because they were forcing up tech nines. What are you doing, Zeus? And then all of a sudden you see Zeus's T-side strats come out, and the battle of all these youngsters from Immortals who had never even been to a major before, like KNG, and all of a sudden he's in the major finals. There are so many great stories lines all coming together and with two teams on their best side fighting it out that was one of the best major finals I will probably ever see and I, if you guys disagree I'm so sorry but I had to share that with all of you so it was a great major guys I cannot wait to the next major and now I have to wait for all the stickers to go up in price because 
uh, right now I'm almost I'm, I'm like down like $500 as always guys Thank you so much for watching the support of my last few videos I mean we're actually gaining subs that, that is so crazy to me We are now finally at the point where you guys like my content enough where you're actually subscribing and that means the world to me Please make sure to leave a comment down below. I, I do apologize I could not reply to every comment yesterday because there were so many like when I say comment down below you guys actually like you all commented, so I will try to reply to every comment on today's video. I will try my best, guys, and hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode. I will see you all in a couple days with some very, very special CSGO news for all of you. So, hope you guys all enjoy. Remember, my name is Jake. Remember, I like you. I will see you all in a couple days or tomorrow or whenever it is. Live, love, laugh, lot. Remember, I like you. Goodbye. This is already happening. Hey, girl, are you kidding me? He's going to go for it. They win the